Hello students, welcome to our today's class. In the today's class, we are going to focus on very simple and important point. How strong field ligand and weak field ligand affects the d orbital electronic configuration in octahedral complex. I am going to take case one. Okay, in the case one, if you take strong field ligand in the octahedral complex, okay, so then how it affects the d orbital electronic configuration. So just imagine in the octahedral complex, metal atom or ion is having D5 configuration. Okay, so D5 configuration if it has, first I am taking D orbitals, 5 D orbitals are there. So those D orbitals in ground state, they have degeneracy. When ligands are coming closer, automatically D orbital energy increases. It reaches to first position to second position because energy increased automatically it reaches to the second position. Okay, these all are D orbitals. Five boxes here and five boxes here. So now here to here difference is D orbital energy increases and those are having five orbitals. Sorry, five electrons. Now coming to this next third step. In the third step, when ligands are coming closer, automatically this d orbital degeneracy splitted into lose its degeneracy and they splitted into two parts. You know very well. In those two parts, one is easy, another one is T2Z. Easy orbitals means you know very well dx square minus y square and dz square orbitals are called as easy and t2g means you know very well dxy dyz dz dzx these are two parts simply we can call it as like a easy and t2g but now we are you we are using in the octahedral complex strong field ligand whenever you use strong field ligand the delta o delta O that means crystal field splitting energy is higher that means splitting between or the, dis the distance or gap between EZ and T2Z is higher so then therefore automatically here we need to follow one rule whenever you use strong field again delta naught value is higher than P delta naught or delta O O means octahedral is greater than P P means what sir pairing energy Okay, so pairing energy is lesser and the gap between EZ and T2Z is higher. So therefore, what is happening? So now how this D5 electronic configuration is changing. Now we have to see here the gap between EZ and T2Z is higher. That's why these electrons are not going to not going to EZ orbitals. So now here electrons total present in the T2Z only. So here you see that total five electrons, they are involving in the pairing. Now you see this total five electrons here two, here two and here one total two pairs and one single electron. Here electrons are not going to easy because the gap between easy and T2Z is very high due to what strong field again. Now the D5 configuration is changing to T2G5 and EZ0. Okay, so D5 configuration is changing like this. Overall, one single electron is present. Have you got it? So this is with respect to strong field again. Whereas coming to the case two. Now we are taking case two. In the case two, we are taking weak field again. So whenever you take weak field again, so here you take weak field again. So here also weak field ligand present in the octahedral complex. In that octahedral complex, metal atom or ion is having D5 configuration. D5 configuration means D orbital has five electrons. Okay. So now the content is same, but final step is different. D5. Okay. Now this D5, D orbitals first in the normal state D5 orbitals that means dxy dyz dzx dx square minus y square dz square totally we can call it as like a simply as like five degenerate orbitals okay five degenerate orbitals are simply d orbitals each orbital has one one electron now when ligands are coming closer automatically d orbital energy increases d, d orbital energy increases so therefore it shifted to this place to that place 
okay so right here also same thing degeneracy or degenerate now also these are degenerate orbitals but energy is increased okay now what's happening it, that weak field ligands closer to the nucleus when coming closer to the nucleus automatically degeneracy in d orbitals changes so they become as like a non degenerate orbitals therefore here degenerate orbitals get splitted into non degenerate orbitals and uh, it became as a two parts you know very well same as like a strong field ligand like that it's got splitted one part is ez another part is t2g so now here you must remember one important point delta o that means crystal field splitting energy or stabilization energy is low here why because this is a weak field ligand due to weak field ligand the gap between ez and t2g is less therefore in this case what's happening p is greater than delta o p is greater than delta o so here p is greater than delta o because here weak field ligand we are using that's why delta o value is lesser or simply you can call it as like a delta not nothing will happen because ez and t2g gaps are less is it clear because of weak field ligand so now how these electrons are involving in the uh, these two orbitals now here there is no pairing because pairing energy is higher that's why here three single electrons in ez two single electrons like that it is going like that okay the changing like that is it clear because delta o energy is lower or that splitting energy that's nothing but a gap is low okay but here gap is higher but here lower that's why instead of pairing electrons are moving to easy orbitals easily have you got it therefore electronic configuration well octahedral complex which is containing metal atom or ion which has d5 configuration is changing like this how d5 gives t2g3 and easy two is it clear so this type of clarity we should have if you want to calculate uh, crystal field stabilization energy and all so continuation we will discuss thanks for watching